It's Sunny and Finn's Money in the Bank special. This week we give our thoughts and predictions on this Sunday's Money in the Bank pay-per-view. What's going on guys? Welcome to a special wrestling episode of the Sunny and Finn show. I'm Sunny and with me, as always, is Finn Steele. Hello. Right, so... We thought we would do a special wrestling episode of our show, Mm -hmm. simply because we talked about E3 for ages and ages on this week's podcast, and with Money in the Bank being this Sunday, we couldn't really leave wrestling out. So here we are. What we're going to do is we're going to sort of talk about Money in the Bank, um, give our predictions on the show, and um, yeah, have a general wrestling chitter chatter. Sounds good. First up, before we start getting into Money in the Bank... um, WWE have announced all 32 competitors for their Summer Cruiserweight Tournament, the WWE Cruiserweight Classic. Um, this starts taping next week at Full Sail University, oh, okay. and it's due to start airing on the WWE Network on July the 13th, exactly. so less than a month away, or just about a month away, actually. Exactly. Um, so it's very, very exciting. Yeah. So I we've got uh, Kota Ibushi, uh, Yoshihiro Tajiri. Awesome. Which is very exciting because I didn't know he was going to be in it. Yeah. Uh, Akira Tazawa, awesome. Brian Kendrick, awesome. Cedric Alexander, awesome. uh, Johnny Gargano and Tommaso Ciampa from NXT. Very awesome. Rich Swan, who you've also seen on NXT. Mm-hmm. TJ Perkins, Drew Gulak, Tony Ness, Zach Sabre Jr., Noam Dar, Jack awesome. Gallagher, awesome. Tyson Ducks, Lince Dorado, Aria Devari, Jason Lee, Ho Ho Lun, Gerv Sira, Half Sira, Fabian Acher. <laughs> <laughs> yep, that's <laughs> a wrestler. Uh, Clement Petois, Zombie Demac, Grand Metallic, Anthony Bennett, Raul Mendoza, and Sean Maluta. Awesome. And breathe. I think <laughs> I pronounced all of them correct. <laughs> okay. Okay, so um, that's going to be really good. It should make for fantastic television, Definitely. and there should be some very, very good wrestling. Um, so fantastic time to be a wrestling fan. Yep. Um, so be sure to check out the Cruiserweight Classic when it starts airing on July 13th. Um, I can't wait. What I might do is the same as with what happened in NXT is, uh, cover the Cruiserweight Classic on a separate podcast. That'd be cool. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, that's very, very exciting. Yeah. Oh, also worth, might be worth mentioning, uh, Rock Culture, popular website, uh, and la- la- uh, launching their own, uh, wrestling promotion called C- WCBW, Rock Culture oh, okay. Wrestling. Uh, the likes of Noam Dar, as you mentioned on there. Uh, and Joe Hendry. Oh, awesome. okay. And, and bloody, uh, Damien Sandell just announced as well. Oh, wow, that's cool. So that's awesome. Yeah, that's, uh, taking place in, uh, Newcastle. I think they'll be showing it on their YouTube channel as well. So. Great. Excellent. Well, that sounds great. Yeah. Um, the independent scene in the UK is so strong at the minute. Yeah, for sure. It's amazing. So, I mean, if what culture are going to be doing that as well, it's, you know, it only makes it, um, stronger. Yeah, definitely. So, Money in the Bank is this Sunday. Um, how have you felt about the last three weeks worth of build up? Um, meh. Yeah, uh, it's kind of fallen flat a bit. It's not, yeah, I don't, I'm not as hyped as I should be for it. I agree. Um, I think since Extreme Rules, it's, um, been on a, a decline. Yeah, a little bit. Um, the last three episodes of Raw, uh, I'm including this week's in that. Mm-hmm. Um, they just, they haven't sold the show to me. No. I mean, obviously we're going to watch it anyway and, you know, um, <laughs> You know, we can only hope that it gets better going forward. Yeah, I mean, it's, there are some potentially really good matches on the on the card. Absolutely, but the it's just the build up for most of them has just been yeah. either non-existent or underwhelming. For sure, yeah. I mean, of course, the Money in the Bank ladder matches had, um, you know, uh, some build up, mm-hmm. um, and I'm sh- I think that's probably going to be the best match on the card. Yeah, probably. Uh, Dean Ambrose teased that he might win it that night and cash it in during the main event with uh, Seth Rollins and Roman Reigns. So, right, okay. Mate, I don't think he will. No, he won't. <laughs> All right, fair enough. Come on, you going to win it. <laughs> but you, you've got to hype it up for sure. Um, I think that um, AJ Styles versus John Cena is going to be excellent. Yep. And the, you know the main event, well, the WWE Championship match, um, will be fine. But you know, before <laughs> we get into that, let's uh, let's just let's just we'll bring the card up. And we'll talk about the build-up for each individual match and uh, see how we see it going. Yeah, sure. So, um, as always, we'll be sort of keeping note of our predictions. And then if uh, they come true, we'll be scoring ourselves next week. Points. So, there's two matches on the pre-show. Um, one of which is Apollo Crews versus Sheamus. Mm-hmm. 
Okay, but I think with this one, uh, I think I said it a couple of weeks ago on the podcast. I think this is mainly a stepping stone for Apollo. Yeah. Um, Sheamus cost him a Money in the Bank qualifying match. In oh, fact, yeah. Yeah. he fought. Is this right? No, Sheamus lost his Money in the Bank qualifying match. Uh-huh. Apollo was due to have a Money in the Bank qualifying match, but Sheamus attacked him beforehand, which then led to Apollo. Yeah. Uh, losing his qualifying match. Yeah, that's right. That's right. And there's been a back and forth for the last couple of weeks, and um, it's going to come to a head at uh, Money in the Bank, well, on the pre-show of Money in the Bank. Mm-hmm. Um, what I said in the build-up to this was, well, when this, when you know, when it first looked like this match was going to happen, um, you know, I said, you know, it's best for Apollo to be having matches like this, where, you know, he could, you know, come out the eventual winner. And him look strong doing so, as opposed to him losing the money in the bank um, ladder match and not really doing anything with it. Yeah, sure. The Shane Apollo looking more uh, aggressive as well uh, in recent weeks, mm. which is good because he's normally he's like a smiling, happy guy. Yeah. And now it's been I guess the same. He's been more aggressive, which is good. We needed that for his character, I think. Yeah, I agree. Um, I think I think Apollo is is great, and I think he has the look and oh, yeah, sure. um, you know the persona to. Be very successful in WWE. Definitely. Um, my prediction for this, I think he's gonna, I think he'll beat Sheamus. Yeah. It makes and sense. Like I said before, I think it makes him look strong as well because he'll come out of this beating a former world champion, a very yeah. recent world heavyweight champion as well. Mm-hmm. And, um, going forward, um, especially with the brand split coming up, I think this makes him look very strong. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I'll predict the same thing. Um, but yeah, Sheamus has been a bit of a losing streak recently, so I guess they could have it so mainly make Sheamus look strong again, but I doubt it. I think Apollo's going to win it. Yeah, I think Apollo's going to win it. I'm not sure what is next for Sheamus at the minute. Since he lost the championship and since the League of Nations have you know split up, um, I know he's took some time off to promote the Turtles movie, yeah, um, but you know he's come back and he's been working this program with Apollo, which I think he'll lose. Uh, so I'm not sure where this sort of goes. Do they carry the v- rivalry on afterwards? Maybe. Maybe, but um, I, I, I see Apollo winning this one. Yeah, I agree. So, for the 748th time, <laughs> we get Dolph Ziggler versus Baron Corbin. He's aggressed. But is this a third pre-show in a row now? I think so, yeah. So it was on Extreme Rules. Um, it was on Payback before that, and now it's on Money in the Bank. But yeah. The build-up to this speaks for itself. It's been going on for since the day after WrestleMania on Raw, mm-hmm. when um, Dolph Ziggler and Baron Corbin fought each other, and Baron Corbin did the end of days to Ziggler on the outside of the ring. Oh, uh, yep. Um, it's been going on since then, basically. It's been sort of some very strange rivalry that people have stopped caring about, I think it's fair to say now. <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, stopped going like months ago. But... Yeah, I mean, <laughs> when it was announced that it was going to be on the pre-show at Payback, People were like, oh, okay, so you built this up on Raw and now it's going to be on the pre-show. Yeah. Fine. The and, uh, Is that the one that Ziggler won on the pre-show for that one? I think so. Yeah, so Ziggler won the one at Payback. Um, they went at it again on the pre-show of Extreme Rules. Yep. When um, Dolph Ziggler, it was a no disqualification match, which Dolph Ziggler lost because Baron Corbin took a swift kick, well, gave Dolph Ziggler a swift kick to the uh, lower region. Yep. Okay, so um, Baron Corbin won that one. So I guess we're at one all if you're counting these pay per view yeah. pre show matches. There's also that matches on War as well, which Corbin has won. Yeah, so it's I very mean, strange. so Corbin's won a, a couple. In fact, he's won a couple of them, hasn't he? Because he won that one that had that was really good. Yeah, and then he won one by disqualification because Ziggler kicked him in the lower region. Yeah, and here we are again, the pre show of Money in the Bank. We've got Dolph Ziggler versus Baron Corbin. Honestly, I don't know and I don't care who's going to win. No. I would like to see Baron Corbin win and then please finish this rivalry. We've been saying this for months, but yeah. We have. Yeah, I mean, really. we've been saying it every time. It's like, well, this should be the last one. This should yeah. be the last match in the rivalry. For sure. Um, Corbin's got to win, surely. He has to win. Um, There's he, just wasting time with him at the minute. It's like, the more you have him on the pre show, the less you have him out there on the main event and yeah. just make him look. And it just. Like it, yeah, exactly. It, it makes Baron Corbin look. Pointless, yeah. you know, to a degree. So, Baron Corbin has to win this one for me, and then this rivalry has got to finish for both of these guys' sakes. Because <laughs> yeah. Ziggler's doing nothing, 
And it's holding Baron Corbin back, in my opinion, as well. Yeah, I agree. I, I'm not a big Ziggler fan anyway, so I don't care what happens to him after this. <laughs> but Baron Corbin, because he's fresh on to the main roster, you know, and... Um, he needs something else. He needs to do something else. He needs to either go for a mid-tier championship. Yeah. Um, you know, maybe go for the IC championship, perhaps. Um, you know, you could have him go against Rusev. Um, you know, any anything but this. <laughs> exactly, yeah. So I'm going to go for Dolph Ziggler. Sorry, Baron Corbin to win. Yeah, I don't know why they, I think they could have put him in the uh, mini the main ladder match, couldn't they? Put seven spot, that yeah. mysterious spot, and never got filled. Yeah, and it's now sort of disappeared, isn't it? Yeah. They've, they've taken it off. Vacant has now vanished off the uh, <laughs> off they the did. off the picture as well. Mm-hmm. Odd. So you going for Baron Corbin as well? Yeah. Definitely. Okay. Okay, so we now move on to the main card. As always, we don't know if this is going to be the order. This is just the order that I'm reading it in. Uh, we have a. A women's tag team match, which is interesting, as opposed to a women's championship match. Yeah, the only women's match on the card. Uh, it's done. So, it's going to be Charlotte and her new lackey, Dana Brooke, taking on Natalia and Becky Lynch. Yes. Basically, yeah. this is uh, two rivalries in one here. So, we've had Charlotte versus Natalia for the last couple of pay-per-views, which has been underwhelming, to say the least, because the outcomes of those two matches have been screwy. Very screwy. Um, and Dana Brooke versus Becky, which has sort of been happening on Raw and SmackDown over the last couple of weeks. Yeah, pretty much. Um, so, uh, Sean actually lost a match pretty clean as well to Paige this week on Raw. Yeah, well, I, I, I don't understand that. I don't. Uh, I just, who knows? Um, the Divas division is, is, is in a massive lull at the minute. Yeah. It needs a, another revolution. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> because at the minute it's, it's, it's very stagnant and it has gone backwards. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. It so has gone backwards. Only one match in war. Sometimes no match in war. Uh, only one match in money to bank. Come on. You've got all this new talent. You bad got, endings to matches. Stupid endings, yeah. Yeah. Bad talking segments. Flat talking segments as well that people don't care about. Yeah. It needs more life. I, I, I feel that they need to bring Sasha Banks back. <laughs> yeah. Just please. to get the fans back on side with Come this. Come back, Sasha. Please. We miss you. Because it's losing momentum very, very quickly. Yeah. And going into the brand split. You know, you need to make it. You need to make it look strong. I agree. For people to to keep caring about it, because when this when the Divas Revolution first started, and you had Sasha come over and Charlotte and Becky, um, you know, it raised the game of the others on the on the on the roster. Mm. But now it's sort of gone back to how it was before. Yeah, exactly. Uh, but yeah, as the predictions, uh, I'm going to say uh, Charlotte and Dana, because Charlotte's been made to look really shite recently. <laughs> uh, so she needs a win. Desperately, in order to make a championship worth having, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> no, you're right. I think um, I think Charlotte and Dana need to win. Dana because she's you know just come into it, and um, you know it's mm. been unfortunate for Dana because Emma obviously got injured, yeah, and they right. would those two were going to be together. So now she's had to be lumbered with Charlotte. Yeah. Um. So yeah, already like teasing dissension between Charlotte and Dana as well already, even though this like. It's, yeah. it, the booking has been very strange recently. Um, very strange. Charlotte needs to re- retain some credibility as the champion. Um, and I think they will. I, I agree with you. I think Charlotte and Dana are probably going to win. We were unsure where Extreme Rules left Natalia. Yeah. And I don't know what's going to happen to her after this. With the brand, brand, yeah. <laughs> with the brand splits happening, um, I'd imagine uh, they could still get put on Maybe SmackDown, and maybe they'll have a new championship on SmackDown. Um, I hope that isn't the case. Yeah, me too. (laughs) But, I don't know. Strange. I mean, you could have women on Raw and women on SmackDown. And obviously they could both be competing for the one championship and Charlotte's maybe on both shows. That makes sense. Um, I don't know. I don't know where this leaves Natalia. Um, She's had two crappy losses to Charlotte Mm -hmm. and some littered around on Raw and SmackDown as well. Um... She's not the diva or the woman, rather, that um, that championship needs at the minute. Yeah, I agree. And as for Becky, I feel sorry for Becky, to be honest, because she's just been sort of chucked in the mix for this, for, you know, yeah. just to give her something to do. And, exactly. Um, she deserves better. Yeah, I agree. She, yeah. The div- the women's division deserves better. Yeah, I agree. You all deserve better. So um, this match is not a good advertisement for the women's division, and I hope it gets better Um after Money in the Bank, going into towards SummerSlam. Oh, uh, yeah. Is there another show before SummerSlam, or is uh, is uh, that it now on the build-up to SummerSlam? 
I think that's it now. I think. Don't quote me on that. Okay. We'll double check that before the end of this. But, yeah. Uh, yeah. Okay. Up next, um, according to the card that I'm reading, would be Rusev versus the big deal Titus O'Neil oh, for yes. the United States Championship. Our, our, our. Um, this is something that's been thrown together as well. Yeah, yeah. Definitely. Um, this sort of happened, was it last week or the week before? Uh, I think before, well, I think. Because, uh, Rusev was, um, beating somebody up. Then, uh, the big deal came out of nowhere. And, uh, you know, started, started this feud with Rusev, basically. <laughs> Pretty much. He gets beaten up, uh, Kalisto, wasn't he? Ah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I don't have an opinion on this. Um, uh, yeah. I think Rusev's gonna win. Oh, 100% Rusev's gonna win. <laughs> uh, yeah. But, it's it gives Titus something to do, I guess. It's just fine. Um, I like Titus as well, and it's a shame it's that fine. he's having to do this just to just to get just to lose to Rusev. Yeah. Um, maybe they're just making it. Like I said on last week's, I think they're probably just making up for uh, suspending him, and maybe them looking a little bit silly, which I think they did. <laughs> yeah, yeah, probably. But I think Rusev's going to win this. Um, I don't see this rivalry continuing after this. No, I think it's just it's just to make Rusev look stronger. Yeah, um, that he can beat someone as big and as strong looking as Titus O'Neil. Yeah, Gutierrez has been kind of interested a bit since his title reign with the uh, his last title reign with Cena, which he lost. Um, yeah. So yeah, he needs he needs to be bolted again. I think. He does. Uh, and he needs to sort of plow through a, a few opponents before he has a real substantial rivalry again. I think. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. So we both can go with Rusev. I think so. Okay. Both uh, agree on pretty much everything so far. Yeah. <laughs> But again, the, the build-up's been so poor over the last few weeks since Extreme Rules that it's difficult to really, um, you know, sort of go any other way yeah, with this because yeah. you don't, you just don't, you, you don't feel like anything big is going to happen on this show. No, I don't think so. No. Well, it'll, it'll be a long shot prediction later, but I'll get, we'll get to that. Oh, okay. Yeah. So, um, WWE Tag Team Championship match. We're going to have a, it's a four-way match that was made by Teddy Long. Um, mm-hmm. A couple of weeks back on Raw when he made his special appearance. Holla, holla, holla. Holla, holla, holla. Um, New Day versus the Gullet Blub, Carl Anderson and Doc Gallows uh, versus the Vaude Villains, Simon Gotch and Aiden English versus Enzo Amore and Big Cass. Yes. Um, I'm not sure how this is going to work. I assume it's not going to be Tornado format because that would be absolute chaos. Yeah. I think they said in Raw that it's going to be like two guys in the ring at the same time. But and you can tag, tag anyone. Yeah, okay. Yeah, okay. Um, this... This is an interesting one, actually. Um, they've made the uh, the club look very strong in the last few weeks. Yes. Um, especially it's since good. they reformed with AJ Styles. Yep, yep. Because obviously AJ Styles is going against Cena. Um, the Enzo's come back. This, this is his first, not his first match back, is it? Because they, they have fought since, haven't they? Yeah, they've had matches. Um, I know that uh, WWE are very hot on Big Cass. Mm-hmm. Um, the Vaude Villains... Although I read that Vince wasn't overly hot on the Royal Villains, they seem to be getting a lot of TV time. Yeah, that's good. Which is very good because they're very talented guys. Definitely. Um, and the New Day, uh, obviously the New Day, and they've had the Tag Team Championships for a long, long time now. New Day. Rocks. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, mm, I think WWE will want the momentum to go with the club here because um, my prediction for the... Dream match, in quotes. Mm-hmm. Um, later on, we'll, we'll, you know, we'll back this up. But um, I see the club coming out of this with the tag team titles. Uh, yeah, honestly, me too. I would say the same thing. Um, yeah, they look really strong. Uh, I think, yeah, they won the match on War against uh, New Day and uh, Enzo and Cass. And uh, yeah, it makes sense for the tag titles. I think. Yeah, we said this a couple of weeks ago that they uh, they could do with it. Yeah, I, I can't. <clears throat> to be honest, I can't see anyone else. Beating New Day with the titles? No. It has to be them, really, I think. They're, they're the strongest looking team. Yeah, for sure. Um, because I, th- I, th- I think there's life probably in the either Enzo and Cass feuding with New Day or feuding with the Vaude Villains. Yeah, definitely. And the club could be very, very dominating going forward. Mm. Um, so I, I'm going to go with the club, and I hope that does happen because New Day have had the titles for ages, and as much as I love the New Day, um, I do feel it's time for a change now. Uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Not any sort of, not in a sort of way where to split the New Day up, keep oh, no. them going as they are because, you know, they're <laughs> selling a shitload of merch. Yeah. And, um, the momentum is 
firmly behind them and mm. they will be successful with or without the tag team titles. For sure. Whereas the club, um, I feel if they're going to be sort of dominating um, the current WWE scene, mm-hmm. uh, I think it makes sense for them to hold the championships. Yeah, I agree. Okay. So once again, we both say the same thing. Yes. <laughs> um, the the build-up for this has been fairly mixed, I think. Yeah. Uh, but it has made the club look strong. Yeah, I agree. And Enzo and Cass are amazing, so. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right, so, uh, the Money in the Bank ladder match. Six man. Yep. Obviously, the winner gets the Money in the Bank briefcase, which they can cash in at any time against whoever the current WWE Heavyweight Championship champion is. So, we've got Sami Zayn, Cesaro, Chris Jericho, Dean Ambrose, and Alberto Del Rio. It still says here, and one more qualifier, but I think that has been scrapped. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it has. Um, I was speaking to somebody on Twitter earlier on who said to me that the original idea was to have Bray Wyatt, but he isn't quite ready. All right. Oh, He's yeah. been teasing a return on Twitter. All right. You know, even this week he put, because I think Rob was in New Orleans this week. Oh, yeah. And he, you know, he tweeted New Orleans, you know, and he's, he's been sort of teasing this return for a few weeks. I think even just before um, Extreme Rules, because he put a picture of himself... Uh, uh, hashtag the return and stuff like this. Oh, yeah. But I think uh, a niggling injury that's that he's had has sort of been holding him back. Right, okay. So be, whether he does still enter the match, I don't know. Mm-hmm. I hope he doesn't because he'll only lose <laughs> yeah. and it will just be a big waste of time exactly, and a big waste of talent. Uh, I also read that uh, Randy Orton could possibly be the seventh man. All right, okay. But in a while. I don't want him to win it either. Nope, <laughs> definitely not. But, um, I don't know, keep it a six now. I'm happy for it to be six where we've had all the build up with six guys. If they add a seventh guy, you know, it sort of ruins that uh, dynamic that these guys have sort of built up together. Yeah, for sure. I think it, it has the potential to be match of the night for sure. Oh, uh, yeah. Um, um, I think, and we said this a while ago that we, both expect Kevin Owens to come out of this as the winner. <laughs> yeah. They're pretty boring predictions though, but I keep saying the same thing. But yeah, it is, but... It makes you know, so much sense to have Kevin Owens win. For, it does, because he's the one who you can genuinely see pushing forward and making um, the Money in the Bank briefcase thing look just so... Just just be so amazing. <laughs> yeah. He says a, says a good heel. Says a good... Sarcastic. Just think of the crowd reaction every time that music hits after a championship <laughs> match. and Yeah. Um... I just think it'd be, I just think it makes perfect sense at this point for Kevin Owens to win it. He's, he's the best heel by far uh, on the roster right now. Oh, for sure. He deserves it more than anyone, I think. What's interesting about this is that everybody sort of beat each other over the last couple of weeks. That's true, yeah. Like on Raw and SmackDown, they've all had matches against each other and they've all beat each other. Like Ambrose has beat Jericho, Jericho's beat Owens, Cesaro's beat Sami Zayn the other way around. And <laughs> it's, um, it's, it's made, the six guys look believable against each other yeah. because it gives that illusion that anybody can win. Yeah, that's true. Um, and I think, you know, Sammy will event, will go back to the IC title scene after this. Um, again, somebody on Twitter said to me that it's rumoured that the European Championship's coming back. Interesting, okay. And if the brand split, um, you know, is any indication, I think that could potentially happen. Yeah, sure. And that maybe the plan is to put that on Cesaro. Okay, yeah. Because you know he's European, and that is a, that would be a obvious WWE thing to do. <laughs> yeah, definitely. He speaks a ton of languages. He's European, given the European title. Yeah. yeah. Um, and I'm happy for it to come back. Yeah. Um, Jericho, I think, will probably take time off after this, perhaps. Maybe. And um, I'm, I'm not sure where that leaves Dean Ambrose and Del Rio, but I'm sure we'll find out more after Money in the Bank. Oh uh, yeah. But right now, I think it makes sense for Owens to push forward with the Money in the Bank briefcase. And eventually win the championship because uh, he's outstanding. And I think yeah. WWE know full well what they have with Owens. I think, um, I think he's ready for the main event push. I, I think he's been. I think he's been ready for a long time. Oh <laughs> yeah, you're right. I he's think really, when he yeah. came in and you know had the feud with Cena yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, at the very start, um, you know he showed then that he, how ready he was. Yeah, definitely. That was actually, actually a year ago, um, a couple of days back. Mm-hmm. But they had that excellent match at um, Elimination Chamber, oh, yeah, yeah. which I went back and watched, and it was it is still absolutely outstanding. Yeah, phenomenal. Yeah, really, really good. So yeah, Kevin Owens is one hundred percent ready. Definitely. And I'm excited for his title reign as well when he eventually gets. <laughs> yeah, it's gonna be amazing. 
Yeah, for sure it is. This has um, the quote unquote dream match between John Cena and AJ Styles as the main event. Mm hmm. All right, okay. If that is the case, um, it could be quite interesting. Yeah. It may mean nothing, and I may be reading too much into it, because we've done that before. Yeah, yeah. But um, up next on the card that I have is the WWE World Title match between Roman Reigns and Seth Rollins. Okay. So Seth Rollins returns at Extreme Rules, finally. Mm-hmm. Um, because he's been missed big time. Yeah, seriously. We missed you, Rollins. And he wants the championship that he never lost. Yeah. He's not going to get it here. No. Nope. As much as people want to see it. What have your thoughts been on the build up to this? Because um And I've liked the um the like little um uh, promos they've done with one and some rains showing like their uh, feud ever since breaking up the shield. Uh where they've both what they've been through, what they've both been doing. Um uh, start like recapping their feud basically. Yeah. It's been cool, but so, uh, I mean obviously um it was announced on the first Raw, the Raw after Extreme Rules, that um, Seth Rollins had take on Roman Reigns. Mm-hmm. Uh, the week after that, they um, they neither they had the the standoff in there where uh, Rollins didn't really say anything and was running back <laughs> yeah. and forth to the ring. That was weird. Which was weird and it's not weird. great. Not great. Um, then the week after that, I believe they weren't even on Raw. Uh, nope, just had those uh, little vignettes. Yep, uh, which are very good, by the way. Yeah, very good. WWE always do a fantastic job of that. Oh, yeah. yeah they always do a really amazing. good job of um, chucking these promo videos together. Yeah, definitely. Um, then this week they were on Raw. Yep. The, the uh, Amber Designer. Yep. Uh, which obviously broke down into chaos. Yep. Which um, enhanced Dean as a potential Money in the Bank winner. Yeah, yeah. Obviously cool. teasing that he could cash in. Yep. Which he won't. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> but like the, the, I like that he hadn't had him attack uh, Reigns. It's like you don't want people <laughs> associated with Reigns right now because this is going to make them look bad. Exactly. Yeah. So, um, plus it was cool to see the Shield guys in the ring at the same time. Yeah, that was awesome. And they were like reminiscing about the old days. Yeah. It was, cool. it was always going to descend into chaos. Oh yeah. <laughs> no way it wasn't. So um, the build up hasn't really, for me, it hasn't built Seth Rollins. As a potential winner? Uh, no. I don't think, anyway. I think, I mean, this has got Reigns winning all over it because he's going to be champion for absolutely ages. Yeah. I think they were going to have Reigns go over Wallens eventually, anyway, if he wasn't going to get, if, if uh, Wallens didn't get injured. Oh, yeah. So, if, I, think, I mean, Reigns would have beat, I think he'd have probably beat Rollins at WrestleMania, anyway. Yeah, for sure. Um, so I think this will be that match that was going to happen. Yeah. He made a win. And then I think um, they may get separated in the, in the brand split. So we, we probably will only see this once. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, uh, I'm still in- interested to see what sort of happens with the brand split because I'm I'm unsure. Mm, it's yeah. Um, I hope way. because they're not telling as much about it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Almost like they know nothing about it themselves. Yeah, so, I will just wing it, wing it. See what with happens. this stupid <laughs> bloody um, GM teasing each week. Teddy yeah. Long of the week, Kane this week. It'll be Vicky Guerrero next week. Got yeah. it now. Oh, you know that's a good shout. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Excuse me. And then there'll be sort of some sort of little uh, skip between her and Stephanie of obviously how Vicky left WWE and all that sort of stuff when she yeah. threw Stephanie in that puddle of gravy or whatever the hell it was. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um. So yeah, I mean, um, the build up hasn't been great for this, but the build up hasn't been great for the show itself, I don't think. But um, I only see one winner. Oh uh, yeah, it's gonna be rains. This is gonna be a recurring theme throughout this year as well. Oh uh, yeah. Um. I'll talk about that. I'll talk about that more afterwards. Um, so next up, we've got the the dream match mm. between John Cena and AJ Styles. Yes, um, I loved um, when John Cena came back, and uh, was it the night after Extreme Rules? I think so. When um, you know he was in the ring talking, saying how the future had to go through him, <laughs> and then and it did the phenomenal <laughs> AJ Styles came down, yeah, and just turned heel and has done a. Uh, an excellent job of it since then. Yeah. Him and the club uh, are just superb heels and I think they're going to dominate going forward. I really do. Mm-hmm. Because I think WWE holds a lot of stock in AJ Styles. Oh, yeah. Um, they got big plans for him, apparently. Yeah. So, uh, I think Styles will win this one. Okay. Uh, I think this will be like a best of three. Yeah. I think we're looking at a best of three series here. Um, 
Are you sure there's not another pay per view before SummerSlam? Because this is June, and then July, and then SummerSlam's in August, back end of. So look. I think there might be another one. And then that's where the third match will be. Good question. I'll look at it. What's the schedule here, actually? Let's have a look. Um, so, yeah, WWE knows exactly what they have with AJ Styles, and John Cena is John Cena. Um, yeah. there's, there's, a, there's like a myth of this John Cena burying talent. Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't believe that for a second. Yeah. Um, I honestly don't. Um, Nexus. <laughs> it's quite, uh, quite bad when you beat the Nexus on his own, basically. Oh, okay, yeah, fair <laughs> enough. Kind of but it's, it's, it's only the way he's being booked. Yeah, it's not, yeah, it's not seen as well. It's the, it's the booking. Yeah. I mean, obviously AJ Styles are sort of, uh, you know, um, sort of played up to seeing a burying talent and all this sort yeah, of stuff yeah. in promos and That's fake right. shoots and all this sort of stuff, which is, which is good. That's AJ Styles playing up to his heel persona that he's playing right now. Um, but yeah, I see AJ winning this one. I see Cena winning the next one, which yeah. is... Do you say there was another event? Uh, yes, it's uh, Battleground in July. But uh, when in July is that? Uh, July 24th. Okay. I've got an interesting theory about that. I'll talk to you about it in a second. Verizon Centre in Washington. In what, sorry? <laughs> in, in Washington, in the Verizon Centre. All right, okay. Very good. Uh, and then I see the third match being at SummerSlam. Okay. But I'm not... It, we'll see where things are at that point before I make a prediction on that. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I, I see AJ Styles winning this, um, just to make the club look stronger going forward. Yep, more than anything, sense. because if you, if you knock AJ Styles off now, mm-hmm. and the club do win the tag team titles, they just, it's just pointless. Yeah, I agree. Um, so I have a wild theory, which almost certainly isn't going to happen. <laughs> okay. Um, <laughs> it does happen, it probably happened in SummerSlam, not now. Okay. But, um, um, I think Cena might, Turn heel. <laughs> um, so <laughs> hear me out. So they've, they've, they've said more that the club is not going to be there at ringside, the band. Um, Tina basically had two contracts: one which said Age of Stars versus John Cena, and then one said Age of Stars with the club versus John Cena. And uh, obviously, Age of Stars went for the one without the club, just to, like prove himself that he can do it. Um, I think during the match, the club's going to come down. Um, it's going to be oh, it's going to attack Age of Stars or, or John Cena. But then they're gonna turn on AJ Styles and beat AJ Styles and hand Cena the victory, uh, basically. In like a in a uh, in a in an NWO esque swerve here. Kind of, yeah. But uh, I don't know. I think I think it isn't gonna happen. Not yet. No. If I think it's too soon for that because they, this, this like they've only turned heel like two weeks ago. Yeah, that's true. Um, if this happens, it'll be at, as I say at SummerSlam. I do but, like that theory though. Yeah, it's it's something to think about. It is something to think about, and I quite like it. Yeah. I just don't see it happening now. No, you're probably right. Um, uh, this will take a bit different because we had, both had the same predictions so far. That's true, but Cena. I do like that theory. And I'd be interested to hear what everyone else thinks of that as well. Yeah. Because um, I haven't seen anybody sort of call that. I don't know if you have. No, no, I just thought of that the other day. And... Unique. Yeah. Okay. But uh, but yeah, it'd be interesting because people have wanted to see the turn heel for ages. Uh, even seen the cell on Twitter that, well, not, not Twitter, but in, in interviews and things that he wanted himself to turn heel. Uh, just, just some, some different to do, I guess. Um, but yeah, I think that'd be a good way of doing it because everyone's going to expect the club to come down and help AJ Styles. And if they see the club come down, they go, "Oh, here he comes, going to help AJ Styles." But then they attack AJ Styles. And it's, it's, I just imagine it going up. The crowd, the reaction to it would be nuts. Oh, and, it'd be absolutely awesome. Especially if seen that helps <laughs> or if he's in on it or something. That's why I think they might save it for SummerSlam. Yeah. But I mean that that could happen, and they, this feud could still carry forward to SummerSlam. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I think it's too soon, but I, I like that. I yeah. do like that idea. So we're both could go. Are you going for a Cena? Are you to win? I could be Cena this time. Yeah. Okay. My boy. Yeah, <laughs> your boy he is your boy. You love Cena. I do. Probably so do. okay, fair enough. But I'm gonna. I am gonna go for AJ Styles. Um, I mean that. That's just me thinking from a logical point of view. Yeah, you're probably right. I'm very, like I'm certain. Hey, but we've seen. Right, but... but I've seen Cena. Uh, do an FU to Brock Lesnar and win clean very recently at Extreme Rules oh, yeah. a couple of years back. <laughs> yeah. Um, I never thought in a million years that was going to happen, so who knows? Yeah. Cena is Cena. He's booked the way he is and that's, that's it. Long Cena wins. Yeah, exactly. But I don't see it this time. No. You anyway. So, the brand split's coming up. Mm-hmm. We don't know much about it. Nope. Um, we know that there's going to be a draft very soon. I'm going to, anticipate that it, it won't be the last Raw before the brand split. No. I think it'll be the one before that. So the penultimate 
episode of Raw before the brown split's going to happen. Okay. So the one before the last one. Yeah. Okay. Um, and I think at Battleground, when did you say it was? 23rd? Something uh, like that? Yeah, something 20 something of July. I think it'll, there'll be like a, a Raw versus Smackdown thing. Okay, that means to see. Um, um, just because of the, the pay-per-view name. I know they had it last year, but, um, you know, you could really do something with it. Yeah, yeah. Um, so it could happen. There has also been talk, I don't know if you saw this earlier on the week, but, um, Jerry the King Lawler said that WWE could go with two pay-per-views a month. The one SmackDown one Raw. Yeah. Yeah. That um, is overkill. Yeah, I think they tried it before, didn't they, for the last? They, they, it was two a month, but they had like, SmackDown exclusive and Raw exclusive pay-per-views. Yeah. Uh, they were sort of, they did alternative months. Yeah. Two a month is too much. It is. I Just agree. have one, but, you know, have part of the show dedicated to Raw, part of the show dedicated to SmackDown, or alternative matches. You don't have to do two pay per views a month. Is that it? Yeah. It's too much. It is too much, I agree. Um, yeah, it is too much. What you could have, um, on, as we're going to have a draft here, is, uh, two clubs, one on Raw, one on SmackDown. Oh, right, okay. Well, that's what, you know, it's just, just an idea. Interesting. So you could have, um, you know, Gallows and Anderson dominating on Raw, and then you could have Styles and a couple of other members. Been better. On SmackDown. Mm. That could be interesting, yeah. You, that, you could do that. Yeah, you could do Just that. complete domination by the club yeah. all over the place. That'd be cool. Like, like the NWO. Yeah. yeah the, WWE not? has such a perfect opportunity with the club <laughs> right now <laughs> yeah, to do something massive. Um they probably drop the ball and fuck it all up, like, like, like always happens. Yeah, like the Nexus, like any, everything else. But it has, <laughs> it has so much potential. I just hope after Money in the Bank we start getting a, a clearer idea as to where this is going with the brand split. Yeah. Because this has been the weakest build up to a pay per view, um, in a long time. Yeah, I agree. Um, yeah, that'd be cool. I'd like to see that. Um, looking forward to brand split whenever it does happen. Yep. Um, so SmackDown goes live July 13th, which is a Tuesday, so it's going to be before that. Yeah, for sure. So in the next couple of weeks, we should, should, no more. Mm-hmm. Hopefully. Okay. Uh, we'll be back next week. Yep. Uh, with more wrestling chatter, uh, more video game chatter, preferably on the same podcast. <laughs> we'll see. We'll, we'll see. Well, it depends. Depends what happens this week. Yeah. But um, this coming Sunday, we will be doing our live Money in the Bank predictions show on YouTube. Yep. So come and join in. Uh, the fun uh, if you don't subscribe to our YouTube channel already please do if you just go search Sunny and Finn play uh, you should find us yep we're we'll on there yep uh, thank you to anybody who turned up to the NXT TakeOver the End Prediction show mm-hmm. uh, that was last Wednesday on YouTube yep it was fun. a lot of fun uh, people have been watching it since and commenting on it so that's great so thank you very much yes um, I'm toying with the idea of doing um, a few streams of old pay-per-views on WWE 2K16. Okay. Depending on sort of uh, the wrestlers that I can find. I was going to do my favourite ones. Oh, yeah. Okay. Uh, the ones that sort of mean the most to me that I've watched a lot over the years. Very interesting. So, King of the Ring 98, Survivor Series 98, WrestleMania 14, some stuff like that. Cool. Okay. So, I'm thinking about doing that. It's going to be like a Saturday morning thing, I think. Sweet. Okay. I'll be down. Um, subscribe to our podcast on iTunes. Uh, follow us on SoundCloud and Stitcher and anything else that you listen to podcasts on either way it is very much appreciated so thank you very much mm-hmm. um, check out What Happened NXT every Friday on the same platforms yep. which is our weekly NXT recap show go follow us on Twitter at SunnyFinPC and if you go there you'll find a banner that it has links to all of our social media pages on there as well mm-hmm. for now uh, enjoy Money in the Bank I'm Sunny. and I'm Finn I will speak to you next time. Thank you very much. Goodbye. Goodbye.